R. Hughes, VP and Design Director, Humphreys & Partners Architects. Hello. It was so much fun to be here. About uh, 10 years ago, we started thinking about some of these issues. Uh, three years ago, we actually put our first drone landing pad in a building. And earlier in 2018, we actually designed the apartment of the future uh, without knowing what Uber was coming up with. And we actually had some landing pads and a, a similar issues of what, the, uh, what they asked us to do later on. So it's incredible to now, six or seven months later, be, uh, be walking through all this. We actually um, decided to attack both of the uh, problems that Uber asked us to look at. So we did a, an exercise for the 150 landings per hour scenario. And for that, we, we used a project that our, um, the local Humphreys & Partners firm um, office here in Newport Beach is working on. It's a 35-story it's a uh, tower west of downtown Los Angeles, um, Big Cell and 7th. And, and it's interesting because it's a real project. So this is happening right now. And it's a, it's a tower that, that's similar to many other projects in the U.S. So it's a 36-story multifamily project with an attached parking garage, right? So it's a question that we get asked all the time by, by people. Okay, what's happening or what will happen with parking garages? You know, you're, you're building a project with 300 units and you know, regulations today are telling you you have to build 1.5, 1.7 parking garages per unit. You're building a $12 million structure. So clients are saying, well, why do I need to spend all this money if everybody's telling me that in 10 years there's no cars? So we started thinking about how to design garages that are flexible and nimble and can be reused. So what we did here is, is create a solution where that garage, uh, if you look at it, we, we're, we're building one more level on top and then using two existing levels, tearing down one floor to provide the landing per hour. So two, two uh, fatals uh, per level and a skin enclosed that has a two-layer system. So the first layer is a green layer. Why green? Because it, uh, it's obviously good for the environment. Uh, it filters water, it uh, helps with the uh, heat urban island effect, it actually helps with all the pollutants, and believe it or not, it's got a very good acoustical uh, properties. So that wall of air between the actual building and, and the green planting system has, has very good sound absorption properties, so that works very good. Now on top of that, we also are using what's called bioconcrete, which you guys might, might have heard or not. It's a new product designed, uh, created in 2015. And it, it's very interesting because uh, this gentleman found this bacteria, limestone created bacteria, that actually gets inserted into the concrete mix. Okay? And it can stay dormant for up to 200 years. Now, any concrete structure, a bridge or a garage or whatever, would start getting brittle and developing cracks, you know, year 20, 25, and it starts cracking, okay? So when that happens, water starts getting into the, into the building, and it activates the bacteria, which actually closes that gap, so it self-heals uh, automatically. And it, you, can, you can close a gap that's two blocks long, and it'll do it in a few weeks. So, and, and on top of that, it's a sound absorption material, so very, very good material to have for this scenario. You see, you know, from a look point of view, the street is still activated. Uh, the two landing ports on top separated 200 feet, and they, are, uh, ax they access the lower levels by two hydraulic elevators. So that can handle probably double the capacity that Uber was asking for, and it just sits on, on an existing parking garage. Easy to build, enclosed, most of the sound is happening inside the structure, so we got good sound insulation, uh, people get off on layer one or layer two, go to the uh, street and then connect with the new 
mode of transportation or they go to the, to the unit. Now, the second, the second, the mega skyport, the big one, this was a headache at the beginning. Uh, you know, we, we were supposed to handle uh, actually double the amount of landings, and then they backed, uh, Uber backed off a little bit. But uh, it, it seems like, you, as you can see, there's a, a tendency for all this, for all of us, we came up with the same solution. Multi-tiered, uh, several levels, you couldn't fit the number of landings on a surface pad, so we all have s different solutions, but in essence, there, it's a multi-story. We actually placed it on a highway, this is at a real site, 105, pretty close by, it's actually depressed, it's got a metro link on it, uh, so we, it was key for us to look at a solution that would use existing infrastructure, tied to the existing infrastructure, and make, make a blend between the new and the old. The plan itself, very simple plan. A circular shape. You have a takeoff and landing on opposite side of the circle. It's basically a concrete disc. And you have 13 charging stations within the circle. Traffic never mixes, so vehicular traffic EV tolls land and circulate on the outside. Passengers are always on the inside. The ground floor is basically uh, an intermodal connection where people get dropped off and g go up to the uh, launching pads. The, the pads staggered, you can see it's like a sundial almost, so at every level they're in different conditions. They, they meet obviously all the FAA requirements, 135 degree departure angles, approaching 1-8 slope, uh, so by staggering, we're able to minimize. We actually did this in less than the three acres required, at so 2.9 acres, so very, very compact and very simple to build. Now, you, you would ask, you can see the section how we are tying with the, the existing metro link, with the existing modes of transportation. We're actually adding, why not, a hyperloop to the station. So you have the old and the new all in one structure. That's coming as well, so might as well have it there. So why a cylinder? Uh, we thought at Humphreys, when we were trying to come up with a solution, that uh, first it needed to be very safe, both for aircraft and for passengers, number one. It had to be easy to build, very cost efficient, simple, easy to replicate across the US or whatever Uber decides to. And we were also asked to have a, uh, a way to expand it to four times the size. So uh, there's a reason, a, basically, you can see different skins on all of them, okay? So there's a reason why a soda can or a bottle uh, is a cylinder, right? It's a shape that where you can enclose the maximum amount of square feet or cubic feet with the least amount of area, right? So this is the most efficient shape to enclose that. Now, you can keep it as, in, as close or, or open as you decide to, and this could have LED lighting, and you can have uh, super graphics attached to it, you can have the wind blow through it, you can have green uh, grow on the sides, okay? And you can have, we're saying, a very, very vivid ground floor to enhance that user experience. This is where people get off either through the Metrolink or through the autonomous vehicle. They don't park, they, they drop you off, you call your Uber on your phone, and you're up. So very lively shops, restaurants, etc. but a very, very easy way to get up to your level and to your launching pad. Okay, very secure, you never mix. That's, you can get the whole, the whole glimpse of how it works. Obviously sustainable, we would have both uh, panels on top and actually the solar road technology on the concrete on the upper level that produces solar energy on the paving itself. You can see how staggering those pads makes, uh, makes it easy to achieve all the, the clearances. That's a different, different look for the same, the same concept as well. So that you got the green wall that's starting to live on it. And next, we'll show you a little choreography to see how that works. So as they land, again, three landings per minute every 20 seconds. This is eight times the speed, though. So we're going right or left 
very easy wayfinding. Uh, traffic control will tell the machine to go left or right, so you duplicate the separation between vehicles. So now you're up to 40 seconds, and you, they go to the charging stations where they stay for about four minutes and a half, and then they take off again. So again, very, a very simple structure. You, get pull, you pull up into your round table, and that could, be, um, that could rotate if necessary, or you, get, you can get pulled over uh, if we don't want any moving parts. Uh, we thought the turntable would should rotate 180 degrees, so once passengers get off, the EVTOL gets actually hooked up, starts recharging, and starts turning around takes about four and a half minutes. That is when passengers start getting up. You can see it's a very secure shape, actually, where you got all the circulation on the outside perimeter and passengers coming through that center section. There's never interaction. Aircraft is always going one direction, and they never mix each other. Again, very easy shape. Very easy to expand, replicate, very efficient building to construct, and it looks cool. Thank you very much.